I'm Rachel, and I have a question for you. How many times a day do you estimate that you change your mind? <laughs> yeah, for context, I literally put on five pairs of pants every morning before I find the right ones. So. And that's before breakfast, so a lot of times. And I'm not saying this to highlight how indecisive you are. I think that changing your mind is a very powerful and important tool because when you can shift perspective and therefore decide to change your actions, that's everything. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about, maybe a lot of it, about a time <laughs> where I decided to change my mind. So when I was 16, I received a diagnosis for anxiety. Shocking. Um, um, I want to start by saying I, I am for the Western approach to psychology. It's helped me a lot, um, and I don't knock that. But receiving a diagnosis of something, it was alluded to earlier um, by Ryan, who said it beautifully. Like, you can feel kind of trapped in a diagnosis. It feels very set in stone. And without realizing it, I made a decision that my mind was broken in a way where I would never really be happy. So I was 16. I'm 23 now. Seven years of that, perpetuating that decision. And later, oh my god, I just saw that you were up there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I will, thank you. Um, later, well, okay, also, the anxiety, like, yes, it's uncomfortable, but for me, it also kind of served me. It just had me constantly making an effort. I was always doing the most. I tend to be doing the most. Um, in an effort to make my life better, make my life better, feel something. And I was feeling fine. I wasn't horrible, but could have been better. Um, more recently, later on, I developed depression more severely than I had in the past. <sighs> this was terrifying because someone, I know myself, and you might have picked up on this, to have a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> to have a lot of motivation to do the fucking most. And I hit a point where my efforts felt pointless, and I didn't want to do anything. And for a moment, I didn't think I'd ever be able to unsee that. For the first time, and this was the big red flag, I understood why people elected to leave this life. And so, I know that is a particular story, right? Um, and I'm not just saying this to say, yeah, I have a mental illness. I'm saying this because the main thing is that I made a decision about, my, about myself. And whether you're diagnosed with something or not, you have also made decisions about yourself. Big and small. Maybe you decided that you don't look good in skirts. <laughs> and so you put on a skirt and you look in the mirror and you think you look like shit because you already decided that you're going to look like shit. Maybe you decided that all the people that you love in your life are destined to leave you. And so you act in ways that reflect that. Maybe you isolate yourself or maybe you overcompensate. And whatever happens, guess who's left alone? We make decisions about ourselves that perpetuate realities that we don't want to live in. And so, regardless, of the decisions that you have made about yourself, regardless of the mental illness you might be diagnosed with that makes you feel trapped in those decisions, I want to tell you something. You can change your mind. The same way you change your mind about everything else, and there's a lot, as you all know, you can change your mind about the person that you decide to be. Mm. 
So there's a little something, a little something that helps with this. Can you guess? <laughs> I was going to say hard drugs. <laughs> yes. Sorry, people online, I shouted. Meditation. The caveat I actually want to point out is that it, yes, meditation itself created the framework for me to change my mind, but it was actually a more philosophical belief that really did it. It was the belief that I could change my mind. The belief that the thoughts that I habituate, I have the agency to change. All of you do. No matter how embedded they are. No matter if, I don't know, no matter what. You can change your mind. I'm telling you, I'm screaming it loudly. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I mean, I know a lot of you in this room are very pro-meditation, if I've gathered anything, but <laughs> I know that there is someone somewhere who's skeptical. And so I'm talking to you. <laughs> Whatever you think meditation is, drop it. Drop it for a second. And let me tell you what meditation is, according to me. <laughs> meditation is deciding to place your mind on an object and trying to keep it there. That's hard. It's not easy. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. That's the point, OK? Because the magic, yes, comes from when you find that focus, but there is so much magic in the wandering mind. Because that is what gives you the space to see the decisions you've made about yourself and to decide to change your mind. With that awareness of all the I'm not good enough, I'll never be happy, I look shitty in skirts, whatever it is, <laughs> the only way to change it is to have the space to become aware of it and then make a conscious effort to think differently, to act differently. And all you need to do is sit down and let your mind go there and watch yourself. So I'm not here because I did it. <laughs> I'm here because I'm doing it. <laughs> and the effort doesn't stop. And that is a good thing. Because it'd be boring if there was an end goal. <laughs> I want to meditate for the rest of my life, you know? I have reason to. And so, regardless of whatever diagnosis or lack thereof that you have, whatever thoughts in your mind, whatever decisions you have made about yourself, no matter how strong-willed and stubborn you are about those decisions, I want to tell you something. You can change your mind. Thank you.